Hi, if you'd like to turn your biggest obstacles into successes, align your actions with your values and aspirations, and find peace of mind and balance in your life, then you're in the right place. I'm Chris Maragakis, Life and Mindset Coach, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast, Mindful Mutterings. Let's get started. Hi, thanks for joining me. So this week, um, I'm talking about anger, uh, because anger is a, a reasonably common emotion that everyone experiences at some point in their lives. Um, although for some of us, it can range from a mild irritation um, to others who experience intense rage. Uh, but both can be triggered by a variety of factors. So in this episode, I'm going to look at the causes of anger, how it shows up for some of us, strategies for managing it, and ways that we can prevent it from getting out of control. So first things first, the causes of anger. So I'm going to look at the first, the five most common causes of anger, um, starting with frustration. And I think this is probably the most common cause um, and one we've probably all experienced at some point or other, some of us on a daily basis. But um, when you can't do something or can't get someone to understand what you're saying, or maybe there's a gap between your expectation of how something should be and the reality of what you're actually seeing, that can trigger anger. Um, and it it's it can be really quite unpleasant. But because we manage it quite well, we don't associate necessarily frustration with anger. We just name it as frustration. So that's cause number one. Cause number two, fear. Um, I, I would say it's the second most common cause. Um, and it triggers anger as like a protective mechanism. So when we feel threatened, triggered or unsafe, our instinct may be to respond with anger as a way to defend ourselves. You know, we get a bit shouty or we get a bit aggressive and that, that helps us to feel more powerful. Um, number three is stress. High levels of stress can make some people more prone to anger than others. Um, and when stress accumulates and becomes overwhelming, it can most definitely manifest as um, anger because that's the way that the the person has been accustomed to releasing that uh, pent up frustration inside them. Oh, and it comes back to frustration again. <laughs> um, and then there's our unmet needs, number four. Um, and when we feel neglected or ignored or when our basic needs such as food, safety or emotional connection are not met, that can lead to anger as well. Although that's more deep rooted in self-esteem and self-worth. Um, and lastly, perceived injustice, which is a very posh sounding title. But essentially, people often feel angry when they feel that they or other people have been treated unfairly or when they're witnessing an, um, an injustice that they can see going on around them. That tends to make people really angry, mostly because there's not an awful lot they can do about it. And again, that comes back to frustration. So then we come to how anger is expressed and it can be displayed in so many ways and will you know, almost certainly differ from person to person. So I'm working on the most common ways that people express their anger. So first one is obviously verbal. Um, so verbal ag aggression is when people express their anger by yelling, screaming, swearing or getting involved in arguments. It's an instant release and it it's, I mean, the idea behind it is to kind of intimidate or make someone else give way, but it's a very powerful um, release system as well because it's so instant. Then we have physical aggression. Some people uh, get physically aggressive, which can lead to property damage, fighting, self-harm, and that becomes more when we get to the more intense forms of anger and it's, it's more rage-based, which makes it harder to control. Then we have passive aggressiveness, which is a really quite toxic form of anger and that's when instead of expressing anger directly some people may resort to things like sarcasm or giving you the silent treatment or intentionally neglecting their responsibilities to you and so it's very difficult to pinpoint you know maybe that they're doing something that's unpleasant or that's damaging to us but they most certainly are and they know that they are it's just a way that they've learned to express their their dislike at what is being done uh, then we have holding grudges when we hold on to anger over time, it can um, often result in the development of long term resentment um, or a grudge, um, which obviously then negatively affects relationships or impacts on mental health because it's not resolved. because It's constantly churning away in the background. And the things that we try and ignore, the things that we try and package away actually cause us more harm um, than it would be, than the discomfort would be if we dealt with it at the time. 
Um, and then we've got nonverbal cues, which are the things like the facial expression, the body language, the tone of voice. All of those can convey anger, but without explicit verbal communication. You know, when there's just you just know there's an issue, but no one wants to take that on. No one wants to challenge it and go, you're right, because you kind of know they're not all right and you don't really want to have to deal with the fallout. So that leads us quite naturally on to managing anger. Um, and managing anger is clearly essential for maintaining healthy relationships and our overall well-being. So um, I'm going to look at some strategies for dealing with anger. Obviously, we need to become mindfully aware of what we're thinking. So then we can learn how to recognise the triggers, which is strategy number one. When we can identify the specific situations, people or events that are triggering the anger, um, it helps us to then firstly step ahead and get some perspective. But secondly, when we know what our triggers are and where the anger stems from, we can begin to address that. And then we can learn how to choose to respond instead of being triggered and reacting. Um, because generally when we're being triggered, we're on autopilot. It's just we don't even know we're doing it. It's so embedded in our conditioning and the way that we live that we're not aware of, of our behaviour as such. And then we wonder why we keep having the same experiences. When we can move to a point where we're aware of what our triggers are so that when that happens, we can think, oh, hello, been here before. I know what's going to happen here. This is not going to work for me. And instead, we can decide to um, how we want to progress. So we're going from triggering to choice. We're choosing how to respond. That is a whole different ball game. That then gives us the power over our life and the way that we interact with people. And it's incredibly liberating to know that you're not being controlled by somebody else or your emotions, that you're actually choosing how you want to move forward with a situation. Um, then there's taking a step back. You know, when when you are mindful and you know what's happening, you can and when you start to feel the anger rising. You, you can use something to help you manage it and taking a step back to cool off and gain perspective, maybe doing some deep breathing, counting to 10 or taking yourself from a situation um, altogether, even if it's just for a short while, can be really, really helpful. It just gives you that time to regroup. Like I said, just gives you time to stop giving your power to someone else and take it back for you so that you can choose where you go forward with it. Um, and then we have communication. So Obviously, the, the best way of managing anger is to be able to express how you feel calmly and assertively rather than aggressively. And instead of pointing fingers and going, you did this, you did that, it's much, it's much more beneficial and you get a much better resolution if you use I statements instead. So if you're saying, um, you know, I feel that I might have overstepped the mark or I feel that maybe there's some discord between us or I feel that maybe my expectations are different to yours can we talk about it it it's a much more conciliatory way of a reaching a compromise or an understanding than going you do my head in I wish you wouldn't do that it's all your fault because people automatically go into a defensive um, position even if that's what you feel it's probably not what you want to be saying if you actually want to get a resolution to the problem um then we have problem solving. So once we've done all the other stuff, then obviously we can begin to address the underlying issues that are contributing to the anger. This might be finding solutions to the things that scare you, frustrate you, um, maybe looking at what you can do to prevent the injustice that you're seeing. Maybe you can sign up with a charity. Maybe you can go and help at an organisation. Maybe you can stand up for that person and advocate for them. You know, until you identify what the problem is, you don't know which way you can help but finding something practical to do is really empowering and helps you lose that sense of frustration over the injustice um, and obviously then once you find solutions to the root causes you're no longer angry you know or at least the anger is much more of an irritation than anger and life becomes so much simpler then of course we have seeking professional help I mean if you are really finding it challenging to manage your anger on your own you might want to think about um, having some coaching or some counselling because emotions are not we don't have to have these violent and powerful emotions in our life the reason we have emotions are in response to our thoughts our, our thoughts spark a reaction our reactions then spark an emotional response our emotional response then makes us do something but it all stems from thought. And if we can learn to manage our thoughts, everything else is controllable and we don't have to be ruled by the way that we're feeling. And we can choose a much more peaceful and calm way through life. 
So then once we've learned how to identify what's making us angry, we know what our triggers are, we've got some, comping, uh, some coping skills, we're then going to want a way of preventing the anger. Um, and obviously preventing anger is an ongoing process that involves building our resilience and, and having good coping skills. But some of these might work for you. Um, stress management. So using relaxation techniques such as mindfulness, meditation or yoga to reduce the stress and uh, the potential trigger it has to cause anger and that's when our anger is fueled in feeling overwhelmed or put upon or um, just under pressure really and we just it's like a pressure cooker and we just blow because we can't maintain everything that's being put on us and so having really good coping skills that help us to relax and step back and get some perspective can be really beneficial um having realistic expectations also really helps to manage the way that we're feeling going forward um, you need to try and vo avoid setting overly high or rigid expectations of what people are capable of or what we're capable of because often that will lead to frustration and anger when they're not met and if our expectation of a situation ourself or somebody else is completely unrealistic and they're just not capable of delivering that then we're always going to be angry you know we're always going to be setting ourselves up to fail so it's about looking honestly at the people around us looking honestly at ourselves looking at the situation and what we want from it and remembering to be mindful and asking ourselves you know are, are the people are what is what I'm asking of these people something that they're actually capable of is it something that they can actually do or am I being you know over well, am I setting them up to fail, essentially? And am I pinning too much on this experience or how I want to feel from this experience? Maybe I need to look at why I need that and how I can manage that in my own life rather than putting all this pressure on other people to deliver. And questions like that, the mindful awareness behind our feelings is so empowering because most of the time we'll realise that actually instead of giving our power away to other people and saying to them, I want you to make me happy, you make me angry, I allow you to trigger me, what we actually come to realise is the only person that controls the way that we feel is us and how we choose to respond to how these people are making us feel or the situations that we're in. And once we master our mind, we master our life. So then we come to improved communication. So obviously working on communication skills is a really useful tool for life full stop. But it's um, even more so for someone who gets angry a lot or if you're dealing with people who get angry a lot, especially active listening and empathy. Once, once we stop listening to respond and we listen to learn and we really are aware of what this person is trying to tell us and we're picking up on the nuances of the body language and the way their voice might be, maybe there's a tremor. Once we start to do that, we get a whole new level of understanding and then that helps us to empathise with what they're going through. We don't want to sympathise and we don't want to take on board their problems, but we can then start to see how it's affecting their life and how we might be able to find a way through this. And that obviously leads us into conflict resolution. And when we can um, use skills like that to move us forward, it's incredibly um, empowering for everyone. Because that way, when we're really good at conflict resolution, when we're really good at listening and communicating with people, we don't tend to have so much frustration. There's no need for the anger to come out because we have a channel. We have a really healthy channel to be able to express ourselves. And that obviously then prevents um, a lot of the triggers for anger. And maintaining a healthy lifestyle, that's really good for us when we're trying to manage our um, long-term irritants in life. Regular exercise, balanced diet, getting enough sleep, all of those can help regulate your mood, your blood sugar, your brain chemistry, which obviously then means that you won't be so tired, you're less likely to get stressed out, you're less likely to get frustrated, you're more in control of how you're feeling, you know that you've got good coping skills because you're um, feeling well and you're feeling mentally alert and that helps you to obviously communicate and problem solve and lastly obviously a long-term solution has to be seeking support if you if you're not managing how you're feeling if your emotions are overwhelming you it, it please don't suffer you know there's there's always a solution um, and so reaching out to friends or family or professionals if need be for support and guidance when you're struggling with anger is a really really beneficial tool Sometimes just somebody else's perspective can help you see things in such a different way 
or help you, you know, some, somebody says something that can just help you see how you can manage what you're feeling and find a way through. So I guess in conclusion, what I'm trying to say is that obviously anger is a natural emotion. Um, we have it because of the thoughts that um, we're having and that's it's our response to it. And it can become problematic when it's not managed effectively. But when we learn to understand the causes of our anger and we recognise how we express it, we find good strategies for managing and preventing it, then we can learn how to lead a peaceful and fulfilling life. And obviously that then helps us to maintain healthier relationships and progress well. We become more, we're nicer to be around, you know, and so we become, I guess, I hate the word, but, you know, more socially acceptable. But it's not that, it's that we have a nicer aura about us our energy is better and people are attracted to that Um, and we don't really want conflict in life it's so exhausting and ultimately destructive that we want to find ways to control and prevent extreme anger Um, because obviously that's such a valuable skill that can improve our overall well-being and like I said the more that we learn to manage our emotions or the thinking behind the emotions that they're causing the more that we can choose how we want to live our life. And for most of us, we want to live a calm, peaceful, fulfilling, gorgeous life because it's a gift and that's where we want to be moving forward to. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope this has given you, I know it's a whistle-stop tour, but I hope it's given you something to think about. And if it's not directly relatable to you, then when you come into contact with someone who is angry, I hope it gives you some understanding of how you can maybe manage them so that they don't impact on your well-being. And if you have found it useful or you know someone that might, please um, share. Please subscribe so you don't miss out because it helps raise my awareness on my channels as well. And that helps me get to the people that I do want to help. Um, And as always, thank you very much for listening. I hope you'll join me for the next one. If you want to reach out or you want any more um, support or advice, then you can contact me through my website, simplybe.org. But for now, thank you very much. Bye.